Welcome to the last set of news clips where we take the advancements in cryptocurrency and bring on a bite-sized piece. So today what I really want to talk to you about is the whole story is what the heck are NFTs and why are we talking about them and why do they have value? That's really what it comes down to. And I want to make this uh, just down and dirty type of video just to get people's attention as to what is going on uh, in this space. I think there's a lot of opportunity for growth. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what they are and why they have value first. Then I'm going to bring in somebody and they're going to, we're going to talk about on-chain analysis, the three criteria. And, uh, and the three criteria is really what I'm using right now to evaluate NFTs and why or how they hold value and if I'm going to invest in them or not. And finally, we're going to talk about uh, things to watch out for as far as scams because where there's a lot of money to be made, there's a lot of opportunities for people to separate you from your harder money for this new asset. So the first things first, let's just talk about what the heck our NFTs and why we need them. First of all, NFTs are those goofy little pictures that you see uh, lounging around all over the internet. You're like, that makes no sense to me. I understand, I get it, because it was the same way. And in real, in honesty, if you take a look at this, we're right now, we're at OpenSea.io. And uh, there's a lot of different, I mean, look, there's like thousands of different uh, things you can get into. I actually went down too fast. I mean, this is just the first 100 pages, you know? So it's the same thing, if you think about it, it's the same thing with like with cryptocurrency, like, well, how do I know which ones I should invest into? And of course, we talk about do your own research and everything else. And uh, real quick on this on this show, uh, this is all investment opinion, not investment advice. I don't know if you're watching this on on Dan Clips on the YouTube channel, or I'll also be putting this uh, into Dan Teaches Crypto, the 100 percent free website, which you can go there and sign up. But I'm going to put that in there to break everything down I'm going to have its own NFT section. But. Uh, so this right here on OpenSea, this is a, the Ethereum-based platform for non-fungible tokens or NFTs and all those goofy little pictures. So, like, why are these valuable? Well, first of all, uh, you see the volume right here, uh, the volume. Uh, that is an Ethereum. <laughs> that is an Ethereum of the last seven days. So, Mechaverse got 34,941. Mutant Cats, 6,000. CryptoPunks, 5,000. That's just in seven days. And uh, of course, over here, you have a 24 hour percentage. Look at that drop though, 40, and down 46%, 64%. If you like volatility, you probably like crypto, but you're gonna love non-fungible tokens. And right now we're going ups and downs and I'll get to that in a second. So this right here is the floor price. So to get the very basic Mechaverse is 2.8 ETH. Uh, right now, ETH is running around $4,300. So you're looking at uh, around 15,000, somewhere around there. Uh, so that's just for one basic one. There's 5,300 owners here in the Mechaverse. And that thing that says ass is actually assets, just so everybody knows. So there's 8,600 assets or NFTs created for the Mechaverse. So the question then becomes like, first of all, what, it, what are these things? Well, let me just scroll down to the ones I really know about. And uh, let's look at the Doge Pound. So I click on the Doge Pound. Tell me about these goofy little pictures, right? And you can see right here, like, the top bid is 2.5 ETH or 2.6 ETH for this one on the right-hand side. And, and before you know, let me, let me go back. See the Doge Pound here? It says up on the top, it'll say uh, floor price uh, right up here. It'll say floor price. That's the minimum you're going to pay for one of these goofy pictures. And uh, let me go back there. So right now, or no, excuse me, the floor price for Doge Pound is 3 ETH. 3 ETH right there. That's the floor price price so we come back here uh these would be people just bidding so they're not going to go below three they're just bidding 2.5 i don't know why because it's gonna, they're gonna the floor is uh, that's what it is so we're gonna get these things and we're gonna buy them so again why do we have any value in these stupid pictures could i just take a snapshot and just take it yeah you could but you wouldn't be able to prove it on the ethereum blockchain so here's what i look at uh real quick for the criteria for nfts one, I'm going to look at the community. I'm going to see how big is this community. And I'm usually talking about Discord. So the minimum in that project, like we'll take the Doge Pound or Mechaverse, we'll take a look at that. The minimum is about is less is greater than a thousand. I, I think 500 to a thousand is pretty much minimum. Under, underneath that, it's not a good community and it's not going to do anything because the more people you have in it, the more they can spread the word. Good is about 10k and great is over 25,000. Okay, and then the next thing is because people don't understand this is that uh, there's actually utility for these nfts so like some of these have like a launch pad meaning that uh, if you buy into that nft like for example if you buy into the doge pound other projects that come along uh, they're going to be able to assist these other projects and launch them off of uh, doge pound they're going to help them and every other nft that gets minted 
through the help of uh, this project, which is pretty darn big, everybody who owns one of these goofy NFTs is going to get a cut of the pie, and it's called a little residual income. And everybody likes that, to get a little income for doing absolutely nothing. So uh, for when I look, take a look at utility, I'm thinking like, is there a launch pad? Is there, some, is there some kind of rewards that is going on? If I hold it, the tokens, and it has some kind of utility, is there some kind of game, gamification? Is there an actual game going on with this? And can these actual goofy little pictures do something for me than just look cool on my Twitter profile? That's the big thing. And then the last thing I look at is the floor price. And uh, some people will say, well, you gotta look at price first. That's a mistake. In my opinion, I think if you just go by price, you're not getting the whole picture. So look at community, utility, and floor price. So, so real quick, when I'm doing this, and I'm here with uh, with the Doge Pound, what I want to do is uh, let me see if I can get a, a better view of this. Yeah, and right up here, let's see, let me drop this down over. So right up here in the upper right hand corner, right here, we're gonna see these little bars, and it's got the uh, official website, it's got Discord. Instagram and Twitter. If I wanted to find anything about it, I'm going to go as far as the community goes, I'm going to go to their Discord group. And I'm going to click on that and it's going to bring up my, the Discord. And they've got, wow, they've got 50, wow, 50,000 members. That's pretty big. I'm going to accept the invite. And um, now I can, I mean, I already know how many people are in there. So that's a, a pretty good flag right there. Like, hey, look, they got 50,000. And this is my Discord. I can take a look at other things like uh, Cyber Pharmacy. Summer Par Pharmacy has, that cannot be right. 490,000, that seems ridiculously high. Uh, Plotty Punks, they've got 8,000. Uh, Ds, you've got, uh, uh, looks like got Twitter, 15,900. Total members, 17,000. Cardano Combat, uh, this one's under members, 1,400. So like here, these are the ones that I'm following and tracking and doing all these things, right? So these, this is how I find as far as uh, community, I go with that and go, okay, looking pretty good. Then the utility, I just go to their website and just talk about like, what does this actually offer? Like with Doge Pound on their website, it says we're also a launch pad. So things can actually be built off this and you get residual income. And of course the floor price, I would not buy uh, Doge Pound because it doesn't make any sense to me because right now the floor price is three. So I'm looking for the next big thing. Now, on top of that, it's not just Solana, uh, excuse me, OpenSea with Ethereum base. You've also got uh, Solana based uh, NFTs called SolanArt.io. And just take a look at this right, right, right quick. These are all the different assets on Solana. Again, how do I make my determination? Just go by the three criteria. That kind of helps me out. I can't tell you what to do. It's just investment opinion, not investment advice. But uh, you can see that, see this thing called market cap? Just in this one called DGen Ape Academy, there's 148 million floating around. And the global market cap just on Solana on this site, Salon Art, you're looking at 595 million, 614,000. So just half a billion. And uh, if we go back and take a look at, at, uh, at Solana, I mean, excuse me, keep saying Solana. Uh, if we take a look at um, OpenSea, as far as like what's going on, uh, we can see that there's a lot of money getting sloshed around. Look, in the Mechaverse, you got 34,000 ETH just in seven days, okay? And again, it's like, it's like $4,300. That's a lot of money moving around. So on top of Solana, you also got one uh, uh, for Cardano, CNFT.io, the same type of thing. You can find different type of tokens. And that is essentially uh, the big question, which is like, okay, what are they and why do they hold value? So hopefully that answers the question. Now I'm gonna go a little bit deeper and just talk about what I see in the future. And this kind of came down to a story that we covered a couple of days ago where uh, CAA, which is Creative Artist Agency, inks a deal with this person on Twitter, uh, NFT Whale 0 xb one Why'd they do it? Well, this guy is just on Twitter saying, hey, I bought this NFT and I bought this and he just showcases them off. Not a big deal. And I'm like, first of all, who's CAA? CAA. CAA is Creative Artists Agency LLC and it's a American talent and sports based agency based in Los Angeles, California. Who cares? Well, they're the guys that manage the A-list actors like Jennifer Aniston, uh, Alec Baldwin, Dave Bautista, DJ Caruso, Nick Cannon. I mean, anybody you want to know. And that's just in the actors department. The sports uh, are music, Pat Benatar, Christina Aguilera. I mean, let's go on. Sports, Tony Parker. 
uh, Derek Jeter. Jeez Louise, Derek Jeter. So everybody that you can possibly think of. And they ain't to deal with this guy or this lady or this group of people. No one knows who it is. It's just anonymous. It's just some guy or person or whatever else on Twitter going, I got a bunch of NFTs. Why they do it? This is why they did it. It says right here. They want to licensing intellectual property in regards to the hottest non-fungible token. So what they did is they set up a, a deal with this guy and said, look, these NFTs are pretty uh, uh, hot right now. Maybe they want to be featured in a movie or a series or a streaming show or whatever else. We're going to sign a deal with you. We're going to connect you to all these other different people. And if they want to do something with your NFTs, you're going to get a cut just for them to show it. And that's what intellectual property does. So on that one regard, we talk about Launchpad, we talk about tokens, we talk about rewards, talk about gamification as far as NFTs. Now take it to that next level. And now here we have uh, another use case, another utility for NFTs. And that's, to me, really just uh, getting going. And then also don't forget uh, that we've also had uh, a nice little uh, story here about Coinbase is launching their own NFT marketplace. And that's going to, it's already actually already out. Today is uh, October 14th, 2021. So they're already doing this right now. And it'll just, it's just a snowball effect. And we're just seeing a big thing. So the thing that I'm scared about is, first of all, this is just my criteria and how I see things. And I think it's best to get the most information that you possibly can. So what I did is I brought in uh, Nick Mancini. He is uh, one of the community developers over at uh, Trade the Chain. And he's also uh, one of the co-founders of Platypunks. And he's the one that knows mostly about NFTs. And he's the one that I get my information from. So I asked him on just to say, you know, a couple different pieces of criteria, which was Nick was, show us some on-chain analysis that everybody can see so we can do our own research. And then uh, I'm, I'm gonna have him evaluate my three criteria right here. Is this a good one? Or should we be adding something in? And then I'm gonna ask, and I'm gonna, uh, have him talk to us about scams and what to watch out watch out for because he's already seen it all so let's just get it from him and make our lives a lot easier so without further ado let's jump into that interview and here we are nick mancini thanks so much for coming on the show i just uh, i need to get somebody in here as fast as possible because this 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 market this this section of the market is moving so fast we just have to get some uh first of all a couple of best practices, some metrics, and then like some things to like look out for because there's, it's just going so quickly. And like we talked about, this is like ICO 2.0. I want people to think about investing, but I don't want them to get screwed over. So Nick, so, thanks so much for coming on. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, great to be here. Um, nice to take a, a step away from from typing so much and actually stretch the, stretch the lips a little bit. So happy to be here. <laughs> Yeah, perfect. So we were talking about in the video how it looked like there was a little bit of a slowdown in the NFT marketplace. But uh, show us some data. Does that confirm that? Or are we moving in the opposite direction? Or are we stagnant? Yeah, so let me go ahead and share my screen. Um, I yep. have a little window. So for those who don't know, there are a few different data sources out there for NFT data. Um, the Block has a great one. And the Block is basically a crypto media publication with a great um, kind of free data arm. I think Dune Analytics has a great one, but the block is going to be institutional grade um, and very worthwhile to you. And this is what I write for the research in the Platy Punk community. So every Tuesday, we put out research on the state of the NFT market. Um, and we want to make sure that all of our 5,000 or 4,000 plus members are up to date on everything going on so that they're well educated in making good decisions. So probably the biggest metric and the easiest to point to first off is just weekly trade volume. So if you're looking at crypto, you know, yeah. trading you're looking at trade volume, right? Like you, you look at this stuff, Rob, and, and whenever you're assessing coins and stuff like that. So this is a great foundational point. As you can see, and take this with a grain of salt because understand when the data is coming. So we are on the fourth day of a seven day week and generally data has a 12 to 24 hour lag. So we are seeing three days worth of data come in for the NFT market for this week in particular. And we are already uh, nearly halfway to last week's volume. As you can see, we had a giant spike, which is, you know, kind of a blow off top, if you want to call it that during the summer, which we saw with many cryptos. And now we're ranging very much like many cryptos are right now. If you actually kind of lined up this chart, it's going to look like a lot of mid cap altcoins. So what we're seeing now is generally it's finding a range. It's between 225 and 312 million for the most part. Um, and as long as we double this current number, so we're three days in, we have four more days to come. As long as we double that, we'll be either close to or above um, last week's number. So as long as we stay within that range, 
things look healthy and there isn't much reason for concern. If we start dipping under 225, um, million in terms of just general NFT volume, that might be time to say, you know, either, you know, we really need to go in um, if you're a big NFT investor and look for deals, or maybe we need to reassess the NFT market. But for right now, given how we see capitulation events and the focus on tokens and Bitcoin and Ethereum and institutional interests, ETFs, it does make sense that there's a small takeaway from the NFT market in terms of eyes and attention, because everyone wants to load up on their Bitcoin and Ethereum. But once Bitcoin and Ethereum have fun and flourish and, you know, price appreciation comes, look what's happened every other time in the NFT market. We have about a two to three week delay on a run and then money starts flowing in NFTs. Um, that has happened on the two major cycles that have happened so far. And I, I mean, obviously, I can't predict or tell you exactly what's going to happen. But my personal expectation is that we would see a third instance of what I just described. Um, this is the average price of an NFT sale by category since January of 2018. Now, just look at this. Um, this looks like the Bitcoin chart in 2017. Right. Um, I'm not ready to say that this is that we're going to double top here because I actually think we busted through the top and we're finding some support here. But I do think we're going to range kind of in this level for probably the next few weeks. So you might see average price dip into which this is, sounds absurd into the low 100 K uh, territory, mm. but uh, we expect this to probably uh, continue to move higher based on the state of where things are moving, um, especially with ETH price action. So um, even though this does look scary, um, we have seen a lot of crypto prices look like this and then continue to move higher, especially um, referencing Bitcoin pre um, 2021 run. So like this is kind of what Bitcoin looked like in 2020 post uh, pandemic crash as it was kind of moving up and higher. So um, just something to look out for. Gotcha. Yeah. So uh, again, not not uh, investment uh, um, advice, just investment opinion. Looks like a little by the dip action. OK, gotcha. So we take a look at that. Now let's take a look at um, the criteria, because like uh, just for my little data points, I look at things. and I'm like, well, how, how do you evaluate a, a project? And this is this is the three points that I came with. So I wanted to, you to talk about touch on this and also to touch about what are things to avoid so people don't get scammed out of their hard-earned crypto? Uh, because um, as as prices go up, there's going to be scammers and rug pulls and things like that. So this is my project criteria. This is a base base level I was thinking about. So I, I look at three things: community. I like to bet on I like to bet on people and teams and the community. The bigger it is, I, I think that the better it is. That that might be incorrect. The utility. I'm trying to look for an NFT that actually does something, and the floor price. I don't want it to be too high. I mean, the max is 0.2, and then of course, the less, the better. So, Nick, give us some of your criteria. What do you think about, you know, these these three points? Yeah, so I think you're in terms of core topics. I think you've picked probably the best cream of the crop in terms of what people, especially people who haven't been in the NFT market long, need mm -hmm. to study up on uh, prior to you know going into an NFT project. So, taking community for the the first point. So. NFT projects in themselves are community driven projects. They, they are pseudo DAOs, whether you like them or not, because one person is putting them out in the ecosystem and it is more or less up to the community themselves to continue to you know, either bring on others, suggest new ideas, help build out the roadmap. Generally, community members are helping the core team with this long term and helping propel the message. So if there's not a lot of community members, you're probably not going to have a lot of buyers long term because it's a community um, it's a community involved thing, very much like if you want to get good at trading, we always recommend you, you, you work with others to get good at these types of things. So um, in terms of your general numbers, I think one to five to 10K is the real sweet spot. If you start seeing above to 10K, um, it's generally an overhyped project that probably has a lot of bots in there. So if you're seeing something like Metasaurs or um, what, what was the big one? Mechaverse, Mechaverse. You know, um, that had 50,000, 40,000 people in their discord. You know, those aren't all real people, you know, so take that with a grain mm. of salt and ask, how did they get all of this? You know, that that is just not natural for any discord group to have that naturally. So if there is something above 20K, it's actually a bit or a 25K, it's slight, slightly a red flag. Um, it's a red flag in the sense that the project will do very well initially, but how well will it do long term? And is this something that you need to be buying if you didn't get into Mint? If it's over 25K, red flag in my head, and I generally don't buy the floor, I just let that one go. You know, let the other let the whales have their fun. Uh, generally, if you're splashing with whales, you're gonna get you're gonna get very wet. So awesome. um, gotcha. yeah. So on so on that one, I'm gonna change this one then. So community, you're saying that 
let's say the minimum would be what? I would say like great would be, you know, five to 10 K like that's a natural project. I, there's a lot of great ones out there yeah. um, that aren't just exploding with random people. Um, and I think another good thing about the community is look for chatter. Like you could see 10 K, but if there's five messages on one day yeah, in the main channel, that that's just, that's, that's not real. So look for chatter, look for welcoming people. If you uh, look for people asking questions, like spend five minutes in the community and see what the reaction is to people asking good questions. See what the reaction is to your hello message. Um, are they welcoming? It is the, are the moderators there? Is the community members or the community managers there? Um, so just do your polls check to see how ingrained the team is in day-to-day -day operations, because if they're not there, then they may not be there later on. So you, you want to look for someone who's working. Gotcha. Five to 10 K is a sweet spot. Minimum still maybe 500 to a thousand. And then good is somewhere in between there, but look for chatter. That's the big thing. And question. Yes, look, for, gotcha. look for chatter and not just spam. You know, someone's saying F in the chat a million times, you know, we want to look for good stuff. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> it happens. It happens. So what do you think? Um, what about utility and floor price? Yeah, so utility is great. So I think I don't think any NFT that is just an image or a profile picture or a work of art, unless it is abstract or by a world renowned artist at this point, is going to fly. Like if uh, I, I don't, I'm not a, I'm not a, a, a traditional artist uh, expert, but you know, if someone big in the art world did a project, um, then that would be a reason to buy. Um, but if it's just Joe Schmo working on an ERC 20 contract, then you want to have something in there. So Launchpad, the Dogepad, or Doge Pound's doing that, Space Punks Clubs are doing that. So that's a good way to bring in revenue and bring in notoriety long term because you're launching other projects. We've seen Binance do this, uh, all the big L1s do this. That's just a natural marketing method. Rewards, um, anything free, which gets people in the door, but how long will the free stuff keep them in the door? So, you know, giveaways and, and raffles and stuff like that can only go so far, although they are a great piece of the puzzle as long as you have other things. The other things can be gamification, like you said. Is yeah. there going to be a video game? Um, is there going to be an art collection? Is there going to be, you know, are they going to buy? Uh, are they going to put assets on the balance sheet to make sure that it's not just cash or ETH? the whole time? Um, are they going to partner with other projects? Are, is owning this NFT going to get you discount somewhere? Um, will there be a mutation project where you can you can mint other projects if you hold the original that you bought um, so long ago? So there's, a, there's many ways to do it, but I think you need to look for projects that are um, not just pictures, that they have actual gamification. Now, when we're talking about this, there's scams everywhere. So the biggest risk right now is the ICO boom 2.0 risk. And so any NFT project that offers token rewards, meaning that if I hold a token or a NFT, I get B token as a reward just for holding it or staking it. Now, in that perspective, that asset is 100% of your security as the SEC currently sees it. That opens you up to securities risk. That opens up you if you're trading that on OpenSea. OpenSea can take it down and right. uh, for no reason other than a terms of service violation, rendering your asset nearly useless um, because you can't sell it on the biggest exchange. You can only sell it on residual exchanges. So be careful when you're talking about these utilities, whether they and, and that they don't dip into being a security. Um, cause that is, that will a open your, yourself up to risk long-term just when you're doing taxes and, and dealing with unregistered securities and B it can open up you just the risk of losing your money or having the inability or having the, having it become purely illiquid, meaning that you cannot trade it any longer. So look out for good utilities, launchpad rewards, games, um, and, and, uh, holding assets that will appreciate in value and therefore allow the project to do more things later on, avoid um, blatant securities fraud um, and potentially unregistered securities as well. Those are those are probably the biggest ones in terms of buying the assets themselves. Yeah, it's a, it's a fine line with that one with uh, with rewards, because if you think about it, you know, like you're not really doing anything, you get a reward here and there. But if it has a utility and a function where you need this to do something, then I mean, that's that that's the whole way that Ethereum got away with it, with, with the gas yes. situation. That's where they got their lawyers involved. But you know what? Uh, just. Uh, just do your own research as best as you can and try to find the one with the best utility. And then um, before we get into the scamish parts that you see and things to avoid, uh, just a little bit more depth, what about floor price? What are you looking at as far as like prices to get into it? Obviously the lower the better, right? But 
Yeah, what would so, you like not pay for? Would you be like, yeah, no, I'm so not paying that? We we saw when we launched Hottie Punks that mints were going for like 0.05 to 0.1. Um, and you know, just do the quick math in your head. That's you know, three fifty, four hundred dollars all the way up to eight hundred dollars. So um that's just not economical to us. If if mm -hmm. if it's an if it's a very hyped project, um, and it's a 0.1 mint, you have to make that decision for yourself, you know, because for me, when I'm buying floors, I like to buy at least two because then I, I try and sell one, get my house money back, and then I'll clutch the other one or figure out a good time horizon for it. So I generally try and buy a few, offload one to get most of my money back, and then I'm playing with house money. And that's kind of how I quickly do my trades. If right. you're looking for a long term hold, buy close to floor unless so uh, this is there's actually going to be a few parts in here and I don't want to confuse anyone. So let's let's scenario base it. I call you, Rob. I'm like, hey, here's a crazy mint happening. You need to get in. This is going to be a quick flip. You would yeah. see that and you would either try to mint it. If you couldn't mint it, you would try to buy at near mint price as close as possible as you could. And mm -hmm. then you would ride it with me or ride it with whoever um, and, and start selling them as they're rising. And you would only do this if A, the mint flies out, meaning that all the mints are going quicker than you can actually realize. You're refreshing and you're seeing numbers just fly off the shelf. That's a good sign. And then B, if open sea sales are absolutely flying, if you're seeing one minute, two minute, three minute, you know, you're just seeing them constantly go. That means there's this kind of demand FOMO effect going on. And you can take advantage of that as a short term flipper. Um, that happens with some NFTs and we don't recommend holding all of them. This is trading. After all, some of them are long term holds like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Some of them are shit coins that you want to trade. So that's a good scenario. Now, let's say it's B. Um, there's a big myth that Rob heard about. He said, Nick, you need to get on the whitelist. I think this is going to be a big one. I know the founders, um, they've got marketing everywhere. You know, they're going to be on CNBC. Now for that one, I want to pay deep attention. I want to go into the community. I want to read everything. I want to understand how the whitelist works. I want to understand where my address is going to go. I want to understand the optics of the contract and how Mint is going to happen. Um, yeah. I want to know if the team is going to delay things. I want to know if they're being shifty. Um, so you want to do your due diligence. If you're going to buy something that is overhyped and that all of your friends are talking about, that can be a big red flag. Um, so you need to do your research. But if you like that and then you try to buy it mint, you try to get on that white list. Um, but if it ends up being like a Mecca and the mint is 0.2 and they're trading at six, let that go. Let the, let yeah. those people trade that, you know. But if it's a it mint at 0.2 and you find one on point for 0.3 directly after and you know sales are rolling, that's not a bad deal because at the end of the day, in a 24 hour period, if those sales sustain themselves, it mm -hmm. should bear a roll into a higher floor. So those are two different ways of doing it. One research based, try to get in on the mint, if not close to mint, or if you're quickly trading is do the same, but make sure that you're, you're, you're speeding up your entire schedule um, and that you're not overextending the assets that you have because the quick trade mints, you're going to do a lot of those. You're going to, you know, it's just like an, it's just like an ICO or a junk coin. Your friend gives you five, you buy two, you sell it at 50%, you look for more. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of, that's what happens in a lot of these trading and NFT groups. So those are two really good ways to look at it. Um, and then if you want to, if you think one is a great long-term hold, I always recommend buying a few, selling one or two, stuffing one in the locker for later, because generally you're either going to make your money back or go even then you've got a free NFT that maybe cost you a couple bucks hanging out that could be worth 10x in the long run. Gotcha. And then so that's that's that part. Now talk to us real quick about uh, scams and things to uh, to avoid. Yeah. So the biggest scam right now is the DM scam. If you're on Discord or you're on Twitter, I guarantee you've gotten a DM from someone from Metasaurs, from Mechaverse, from Punks, from Board Ape Yacht Club that says, hey, I've got a mint ready for you. All you need to do is give me all of your info and then you and your firstborn child. And to some people that looks legit. Um, it, it does, it, they make it seem very real, these DMs. No one will ever, 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 ever DM you for a mint or for a project that is actually legit or worthwhile. If you get a DM in your inbox from anyone marketing a NFT, whether it looks real or not, block them. Block them, block them, block them, because they will contact you again. They will find another way to do it, and they will keep doing it. So if you get a random DM, it is a scam. Do not mess with it. Tell all of your friends that, because I actually have had friends who are savvy and be like, this looks real, and no one has done this to me in any other financial product in my life. So 
It looks real, but block the DMs unless they are from your trusted friends. And if anyone asks you for info, whether it's email, ERC20 address, price you bought, anything, make them verify themselves. Make them, make them, make them verify themselves. And, and feel free to reach out in the community too. Because if at Rob from Digital Asset News reaches out on DM and says, hey, give me your ERC20 address, it's probably not him. And if you go and tag him in the community, he'll probably tell you it's not him or he will. Um, so that's the biggest one. The other one is um, scams on OpenSea themselves. So let's say you're looking for platypunks. Right. There are scam platypunks out there right now. And if you go to them, they will look legit. Um, and you, the, um, yeah, so, yeah, so, so you're on the total marketplace. That was, that was see, like, if you type in platypunk, you're going to get those random numbers that Rob just showed. Um, so that is why we always recommend going off either our website or our Twitter to get all of our links. And then you can see OpenSea's right there, our Discord's right there, our website's right there. So for platys, that's an easiest example because if you type in platypunks, you're gonna see four scams immediately. Um, so always verify, never trust, always verify and do that via the website or the Twitter um, and maybe do both just to verify because you're talking about money here and you don't wanna lose your money. Um, the third one would be on also on OS is let's say a listing is happening really quick. And let's say the listing is for 0.1. Um, someone will sometimes do like a, a one, like a one ETH and it'll look like 0.1 because you're trying to buy as quickly as possible. And so you click that and then you click buy and you go, oh my God, I just bought a, a 0.1 asset for one ETH. I have done this. It felt very bad because I was quick and I was not doing my due diligence and it hurt. Um, I will never do it again, but I know people who have. So always double check your listing prices always double check what page you're on for the nft itself and never trust a single dm that anyone ever sends you and you should do a lot better than i think half the nft market if you follow those three rules yeah sounds good all right so that is uh, all encompassing uh, a really good uh, starter kit to get everybody going but uh, nick i want to th say thanks for uh, coming on and doing giving a little education that's where the whole power comes from. So Nick, we appreciate it. Any last words of wisdom for the uh, investors out there, even though you dropped so much? <laughs> yeah, so um, I think there's two final notes is A, I think even it, whenever the, the night is darkest before dawn. Every time in crypto, when everyone comes out and says things are dead, that's when things are very much alive. So um, I, I cannot tell you that there will be gains. I can never guarantee them, but I personally am heavily invested in the things that I discussed today. Um, and B, um, as you are diving into the NFT market, like Rob said, we offer NFT research weekly in the Platypunk community, which is free to be in. And it's on our Twitter. So if you want to join and just get weekly updates and ask people who are very much in line with what's going on on a day to day basis, all of that is in the Platypunk community if you want to come hang out. So thanks so much, Rob. Perfect. And I'll link everything in the description. And as a, as a final word, just remember, everybody, uh, of course, you're going to research, but this will not last. Everything that's going on in NFTs will only be here for so much time and then there'll be a big crash. So I see it happening. It happened in ICOs. It's happened with uh, cryptocurrency market. So uh, if you think this is like a diamond head situation where you have to hold forever everything, this is not what you need to do. So just be smart, take your profits and get in and get out. And that's about it. All right, Nick, thanks so much. We appreciate it. And uh, of course, we'll uh, let's jump back. OK, great. So I know that went a little bit long, but I mean, this is a pretty big opportunity, I think, going on. And I cannot stress this enough that this is a very, very volatile market and very dangerous. You should not be diamond hands holding this forever. This is to me, I can't tell you what to do, but uh, to me, this is a, a, a buy and sell situation and not to be taken lightly and to be uh, really focused on what you're trying to do here. I am not going to be holding all of these NFTs forever. Some will, most will not. And that's it. So look, uh, first of all, if you're here on YouTube, uh, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and a like. That'll expand it to everybody else. That uh, it really helps a lot. Also consider subscribing to Dan Clips. That's uh, tremendous. A lot of things we talk about are just the advancements. We do a lot of different uh, things and different projects that are coming up, just breaking the mold. If you're watching this over on danteacherscrypto.com, remember the, uh, the the rule, it's free, just share it with two people. That's all I ask. And it's, it'll be 100% free for as long as I can keep that website going. But that's it. So look, uh, thanks so much. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.